by by second by the end of second year, after doing a lot of these, you know, weeknight student nights and um, you know, just playing with other student DJs, it was kind of when I started playing with warming up for established DJs. That was kind of the first step into this sort of networking, you know, and creating creating the network thing, which was yeah, the first step into my like tree of um getting into the getting into the DJ lad onto the DJ ladder. Um and I took these warm-up gigs really seriously and with like a lot of respect. When they first came around I was obviously super excited to be connecting with these established DJs and it was because I took those gigs seriously and I wanted to properly warm up for these DJs, do my homework and actually set the vibe and not just, you know, smash out all of your bangers. Um, that firstly with Hi, she, we hung out afterwards and then after chatting for a bit, she invited me to play at her Phonox residency in London the following, like for the following month, the following couple months. And then that was my first gig outside of Bristol. With Hammer, again, like, I was warming up for him at Lakota. He really, both of those times, they could tell that I had, you know, taken this warm up gig seriously. And we got chatting afterwards, and then he introduced me to my now current agent. Um, so those were two pretty, like, instrumental things that, you know, by taking them seriously, it led to other things. Um, and even for me as well now, like I curate nights in London and when the, I usually book like a local or an up and coming DJ for the warm up slot and the ones that do those well sticks in my mind and I want to hit them up afterwards and kind of chat with them and see like, see if they can like, see if we can get more opportunities for them because yeah, it really does stick out and stand out because, you know, people people don't pe like initially people don't want to do those warm up gigs properly you know um and then the second thing i wanted to point out with these last two points was the with with the networking like building the network thing so with secret garden party that was also another kind of major gig outside of like this the student parties and the bristol gigs i went to motion and I stayed till the end of the stayed till the end of the night I was in room three um like in one of the small rooms um there was a DJ that was playing in there I really liked their music so I stayed till the end went up to them good went to, in to chat with them we became friends and they were like send me some mixes and then I did and then we got chatting more and then after that we turns out they were curating part of like one of the stages in Secret Garden Party and then got to play there that year. So it is worth, with that, it's worth kind of going to gigs that you, going to gigs, um, staying till the end if you, if you can and get chatting with like the promoter or the DJ and doesn't have to, like something might not directly come, like I've done that a lot and like not always that things come directly out of it, but there was another example where I did did that and I got chatting to the promoter and then he like remembered me three years later and then he invited me to play um, in the mountains for the like one of the uni ski trips. So you never know what might come out of just like these little conversations, asking them for like a bit of advice or just saying that you like their music and you wanted to share some mixes, get to see what their feedback would be. Um, yeah, things like that. 